Okay, today we're going to look at projective measurements and operations. Suppose that we start off with a qubit. So psi is equal to alpha 0 plus beta 1. Okay, so that's our qubit. And we can measure this qubit, psi, to see whether it's in the state 0 or 1. Both of these are kets, and both of these form uh, a basis, 0 and 1, form the bases of the qubit. So when we measure it, we want to see whether it collapses to 0 or collapses to 1. Now, as we discussed before, if it collapses to 0, it will collapse with a probability of modulus alpha squared. And likewise, for 1, it will collapse to 1 with a probability of beta squared. Now this is the, the modulus squared of, of alpha and beta. Now to ensure that the probabilities add to 1, we have this condition. We have, for both of these probabilities, alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to 1. That that means that all the probabilities we have sum to unity, which is a condition of a probability distribution. Another way of saying this is psi, psi, the inner product of psi with itself, is equal to 1. So these are equivalent ways of saying the same thing. And to explicitly see that, simply work out this inner product of psi with itself using this definition of the ket, and alternatively with the bra, and you'll see that is equal to 1. Okay, so two other useful states are the Hadamard states. Okay, so the Hadamard states now we write them in the following way. So Hadamard states. We write it as plus ket plus is equal to 1 on root 2 0. Now this is where the plus comes in that we, t that we just wrote there. Plus 1. Okay. So again, in a similar way to our qubit up here, we have a basis for 0 and 1, but this time the probability is 1 on root 2. Well, the, the, um, the factor at the front is 1 on root 2 with a probability for each b and a half. Now, we now have the plus. We can also write the minus equivalent, which not going to be too surprised to see it's 0 minus 1 here. Okay. So as I mentioned before, we can see along the lines of this discussion here, the probability that if we measure plus and measure minus, the probability of it collapsing to 0 is simply this alpha modulus squared. So it's just the modulus squared of that. So the modulus squared of 1 on root 2 is just the square of 1 on root 2, which is a half. So the probability of getting 0 and 1 comes out just by squaring this term out the front, and it's applied to each of them, therefore each have the same probability of a half. Now the Hadamard states are orthogonal, which means that the inner product is 0. So we can write that mathematically as plus, the inner product of plus with minus, orthogonal, so it's 0, and likewise, the inner product of minus with plus is 0. And again, you can explicitly see that by using these definitions here and acting them, using these definitions here and acting them in this way. And essentially what you see is the, um, the overlap of states with 0 and 1, and, and they will cancel out. Okay, now let's look at projective measurements. So let's scroll down a bit here. Okay. Now, a projective measurement performed on a quantum state psi, so we're going to do some sort of measurement on our qubit psi, it collapses, collapses to the ket i okay. with probability, with probability given by this, i 
acting on psi and then psi in a product with i. This can be rewritten. Now these these two terms here are just complex numbers so you can just look at this for instance as being alpha and this as being alpha star. Okay, And so we can move them either side. It doesn't matter where they're placed here. So this whole thing is, is a number and this here is also a number. So then in, in much the same way that we will get to modulus squared of alpha, here we get the modulus squared of the inner product of i with psi, the qubit. Okay. So let's look at this. If we make a measurement and psi collapses to i, the probability of this happening is equal to this term here, the inner product of i with psi modulus squared. Okay, so now let's look at, we'll come back to that soon, but let's first look at an operation. Okay, operation. An operation O. Let's define it by the operator O. It can be represented as O is equal to summing over I's and J's, alpha I, J, and the outer product I with J. Okay, so these, this term here, alpha I, J, oops, let's make this J, alpha I, J is just the matrix elements are the other elements of a matrix. Okay, so I here represents the row, position of the row, and J represents the position of the column. Okay, so let's let's make sure we understand that. So let's say we have this this uh, this matrix one, two, three, four. Just a collection of numbers forms a matrix. Now we can say that we call this term row 1, column 1, so alpha 1, 1. This one here is alpha 1, 2, row 1, column 2, and so forth. Row 2, column 1, and row 2, column 2. So you can see here that alpha 1, 1, which we can get from here, for instance in this example, would be 1. Okay, let's move on now. So a projective measurement let's call it M, projective measurement, it's an operator, M, on a state is represented by the outer product of the form X, X. Now at the moment we're just slowly getting into measurements and projective measurements is the simplest form of such a measurement. More generalized versions of measurements will be discussed in later videos. Now the operator is Hermitian, okay, so this is a Hermitian operator, Hermitian, and basically what that means is for an arbitrary operator, um, let's say, let's call it M still, M is equal to M dagger, okay? So that's the definition of Hermitian. Now what does M dagger mean? Well, let's, uh, let's take a, an example of, a, of an operator. So let's define the operator. 0 minus i, i, 0. Okay, we'll see this operator a lot in future tutorials. Okay, this operator y, um, the transpose, the, the, the dagger of this as we define here, is actually, as we mentioned before, the complex conjugate transpose. Okay, so let's take all transpose first. This row here becomes a column, okay? So we simply put i, i0, and minus i here. Now this row also becomes the final column. So i and 0, okay? Now we have one more step to do. So let's put an arrow here. Now what we do is we take the complex conjugate of any imaginary numbers. Simply all that means is if you see an i, make it minus i. If you see it minus i, make it an i. Okay, there's a simple formula there. So this i becomes minus i, and this one becomes plus i. Okay, so this is now equal to y dagger. 
That's all it means. The complex conjugate, complex conjugate here, transpose. Okay. So from this, uh, from what we've defined as Hermitian, then Y is also a Hermitian operator. Okay. Let's look at an example now. Example. Okay. Let's look at the example of the action of a projection operator on the state plus. Okay, so remember plus was defined previously as 1 on root 2, 0, plus 1. That's where the plus comes from, okay? And we want to act the projector 0, 0, the outer product of 0, onto this, okay? which simply means just multiplying, effectively grabbing this and multiplying it by the plus. So 0, 0, acting on, plus. Okay. Now this term here is just some sort of number. Okay. Now if we add this term into here, we see that this is actually equal to 1 on root 2, 0. Okay. Now, when we have a projector of this form, what it means is, by, by its name, is it projects it into this basis, into this cat here. Okay. So, we're going to project it, the final state will be zero. So, that shouldn't be a surprise. And now, the probability of this happening, remember, the probability of getting zero, zero corresponds to this, this, um, this state here, is equal to the modulus squared of the coefficient out the front. So that's equal to a half. Okay, and if we did a projector 1, so 1's were here, acting on this, then it would also be a half. But the final state would be a 1. Now the fact that the modulus squared provides the rule giving us a probability in quantum mechanics is something that is known as the Bohr postulate. Okay, so the Bohr postulate. All that means is just what we've been doing here. So this is the Bohr postulate. You make a measurement and the probability here of it occurring is, is given in this manner. 